Hello, Positive Tunnel Visioners! My name is David Russo. I went viral before the word was viral. I kid you not. When I was younger, about 13 years old, my parents had bought me an Apple IIe computer. This was back in the 1980s. And this computer was very big, bulky, had a big base, and it also had two disk drives. And whenever the disk drives were used with the floppy disks and they had a read off of each other, it would go eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh. And then I had this keyboard, similar to we have of a keyboard today, not wireless. And also I had a, um, a phone next to my, uh, my computer which was uh, one of those phones that were square with the, with the buttons that you press. It was a landline phone. It wasn't like these cell phones and didn't even know of them. So what happened was, is that I was really into Dungeons Dragons. I loved that role playing game when you roll the dice. And then what I really liked about that game is that it used your imagination. You went on adventures. You can actually fight monsters and dragons and skeletons and the minotaurs, and it, 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 at that time, it, it didn't even have all those advanced characters, but we, we were even making up our own type of uh, monsters that we could use in the game. And it was such a fun game. We, we'd always play, get together with the friends, and play this game. And Dungeon Dragons back then was the biggest thing since sliced bread to kids. Because there wasn't really as many video games around. I mean, you could play a video game on your computer, but it wasn't interactive like it is today. And it didn't have the graphics that it had today. But I had this Apple IIe, and I had come home uh, to you know go use it. And my brother came into my room and he said, hey, Dave, he's three years older than me. He said, hey, do you want a um, Dungeon Dragons game on your computer where they could call in and it could be interactive with other computers? And, and, I, and, I, and I, that's what I recall, but it might have used some other terminology, you know, not as, uh, you know, like that. But basically, I said yes. I was enthusiastic. I was passionate about Dungeons & Dragons. I had no, um, uh, you know, objections about it. Um, so what happened was, is that he said, buy the modem, buy the program. So I bought both of them. They were kind of cheap. So I... Uh, got the modem into the computer, and we got the program up and loaded. And they had, you know, my brother had friends that were about his age, and, and they told other people about my computer. So they were my marketers. And, uh, I, and, and I wasn't even paying them, imagine that back then. You know, like today, you, you have a business, and you, you pay these marketers and advertisers, you know, you try to find out what works, what doesn't work. But back then, they had told, you know, different people, friends and stuff and it spread like like wildfire you know because they started calling my computer and they would be able to get onto my computer and they would play interactive type of game there was no graphics again but it was one word at a time that would show up on the screen like this to complete a whole sentence and then it would complete another sentence and another sentence until it completed the whole page and when it got to the bottom of the page it said, what would you like to do like of your action? So they had a, a, a character and now they were able to choose what they could do on the game. And I was the Sysop. The Sysop meaning that I was the owner of, of this uh, you know, um, game system. And they would get on this game and they would be able to uh, joust. And when they would joust on a horse, if they won, they would win some uh, money and some skill levels. And they were able to actually go to a casino to gamble some money to uh, to make uh, more money. Or they were able to go and um, duel against and fight uh, against another character by raiding their castle. And they would go up into different levels. And on each level, there might be a monster that they would have to fight against. And it was just an amazing game. And then when they would finally beat that person in the castle, they could leave a comment and some of them were leaving, uh, you know, goofy comments and, and some were, uh, you know, funny and some were uh, really serious. And I was the one who uh, decided if, you know, you leave the comment or not. And uh, at times they might want to uh, even talk to me, the, you know, the person that was, you know, playing this game system. And I, I'd be able to type back to them. And 
when they, after they raid the castle, they leave that comment and they might say like, uh, the king has left the castle or you're no longer the king of your castle. And it, it was just, uh, you know, different types of funny things and, and fun things that they would do, you know, when they would uh, type in these comments. Now, this game system, they were calling it nonstop and that nobody, it was hard for them to get on and they can only play twice a day. And then they can only play a few times, uh, like about seven times or, or nine times. And then they would get booted off this game if uh, and have to start over unless I validated them. And uh, I would uh, was saying, you know, everybody's calling up. What, what do I do? And it ended up that I said I, I had a line that I typed in to the computer of the program where it said, if you want full if you want access to your character to continue uh, send me twenty dollars cash in the mail because i didn't even know about the credit cards back then i didn't know about checks you know as you know really other types of monetary systems we didn't have bitcoin back then you know so uh, basically uh what happened was is that i would come home from school after days of uh you know going through school and having to listen to this teachers and, uh, you know, spending all my day there and, and really wanting to get home so I could get to this game system that I had because I wanted to watch the other player on the line. Well, when I would come home, I'd walk up to my, uh, to my mailbox and inside my mailbox when I got it was the mail and there was an envelope addressed to me and I would open it up and it was $20 cash. So, I would go inside and I would go upstairs and put it in my drawer and then I would go over to the computer and I would watch and it was like I was addicted to this. I would watch this game. Now I needed a character for the game so that I could play too and I chose to be a uh, Phantom Fighter. Why? Because Ghostbusters was the biggest thing, you know, it was, everybody was the craze about Ghostbusters. We're talking about the first one, not, not the, um, the many of them. And then I chose to be Phantom Fighter because Ghostbusters, I replaced the words Ghostbusters, Ghost, Ghost with Phantom and Fighter with, um, with, uh, with Busters. So I took my name and I, and I was Phantom Fighter back then. So I was able to play, uh, you know, all the time, you know, twice a day, and I knew how to play this game. So I was number one on the game system. And I was, uh, you know, making money. I was running a business, and I didn't even know it. Now, while I was, I was watching this game all the time, my friends wanted to get together with me, but they couldn't even get through to my landline. And there was no other way to get in touch with me. Now, I was watching this and staying up all night long, watching what they were doing on the other end. And kids were calling nonstop into this game st system. There wasn't a moment where someone didn't get, uh, happen to get onto this game. It was that popular. It was uh, just so popular. I, I, I don't even know in, in how to explain how much of a, a popular thing this was because it was the only game, not only in my town, the only game in town, but the only game in many towns. So what happened was, is that, that was uh, my battery even going on my phone because uh, this story is so um, involved and there's so many parts to it. And it's just, you know, as you listen to it, you can probably pick up nuggets of what I was doing back then without even knowing it. And I actually learned a lot of things that uh, one of the things was uh, first and foremost, you have to say yes to wanting to go viral. Not that you're, you're, you have to say, oh, I want to go viral, but yes to something that you're really passionate about and that you're going to put yourself out there. So that's one of the things. So what happened was, and you're probably wondering what happened to my game system and where to go next. Well, it's amazing in life. It's when you start getting involved in something and thinking about it and thinking about it and doing, doing and doing and, and, and so active in it and your thoughts are on it and your feelings are on it. Well, as I was doing this game system, I was uh, so into it that I started hearing, wow, 
I could get a faster modem where the whole page comes. Or I could get a third disk drive and get an adventure. Wow, wouldn't that be neat? And then when I was lying in bed and I'm up late at night, I'm going, wow, if only I could have two or three more of these. So I was going full speed. And I was like, you know, it was like uh, the speed was just, you know, driving me. And I was just so excited about it. And, uh, and, 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 and I was just kept at this. And then one day I get brought up to school because I was sleeping in the classes and the teacher said, hey, we got a great solution for this. Just have that game system that he has, whatever, have it on the weekends. He has to, uh, you know, focus on his school and study for school. And, uh, and of course he has to go to college. So they only had it up on the weekends, but when it was up on the weekends, I started on Friday and it was nonstop phone calls. The modems were going connecting back and forth and it would go nonstop. And then what happened was it would go to, all the way to Sunday and then I have to shut it down by, uh, by Monday morning, right? Or Sunday night. And what happened was is that those disk drives would go eh, 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 eh. and when my mom would pass the room, she'd hear that and she'd be like, what is, it? What is he doing? Man, this noise and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, so it, it was really, um, you know, something that was, uh, you know, had to be run as this way in order to, uh, you know, keep this uh, business going that I, I wasn't even um, aware of. <laughs> and then uh, what happened was, is that when we were gonna put the third disk drive in and we had a chip for the computer, the chip was placed into the disk drive, into the motherboard and the computer, the motherboard was still on and, and hooked up into the electricity. And because it was still on, it short circuited, maybe blew out my whole motherboard. And after it blew out that, then, uh, the computer was all broken and needed to be fixed. Well, my parents found out and they were livid. They were just crazed about the whole thing. And I said, hey, don't worry, I got the money. It's in my drawer, I can pay for this. And they didn't want to hear it. They wanted me to uh, you know, focus on the studies, get to college, and that was that. So I did go to college. And for the longest time, and I got my Bachelor of Science degree, and for the longest time, and then I went to uh, you know my, my day job, and for the longest time, I did not ever speak about this story again. Why? Because my, my mind was blocked about it because of the, the experience that I had of it that I shouldn't be doing that, that I shouldn't be putting myself out there, that I shouldn't be um, telling, uh, you know, like, like doing something that's different than anybody else. And that had affected my whole outlook in my life. And I realized later on in life that I can put myself out there. I can do something different. So when I, when I went these directions, I changed in many, many ways. Like I now do a positive tunnel vision video a day. I also uh, wrote, you know, different books like like uh, Positive Tunnel Vision and Master Maestro. Now, anybody can go viral if they do certain things. And you, it, you don't have to be a certain age. I mean, Ryan's world, the, 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 the child was young and, and he was the main um, character and it was all centered around him and they branded it, you know, around him. And he became very popular. And you don't have to have you know, a college education, because obviously when I was younger, I didn't know anything about business. And here I am, you know, um, making money, um, uh, getting uh, people to market for me. <laughs> I'm getting, uh, I'm getting users by, 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 by the thousand, by the whatevers. And it's a whole different, um, you know, thing that you, you know, it's not the same as just the norm of, of something. So, you have to, you know, there, there, I did do something that I was very passionate about. Uh, so, you know, at this point, I, I'm doing something that I'm passionate about and that I enjoy. And I want you positive tunnel visioners to get this lesson that I got uh, when I was young, that I, when as I grew up and reflected back, that uh, the lesson about being viral. And I want to, you know, share this with you and to have this value in your life. And I, I take this value in my life because what happened when I was younger is that once your mind is stretched, 
it never goes back to its original form. And that's something that Thoreau said. So my mind was stretched back then. And maybe today your mind is stretched. And now it will never go back to its original form. Positive tunnel visioners, keep positive and stay that way.